Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a good old will I buy it, a weeby, if you will. We're also gonna be talking about why you do not need any of this makeup, a mashup, if you will. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about today. It's been like two weeks since I filmed anything at all. I've been on my Easter holidays, but it's been like three weeks since I did my last Will I Buy It? And there have been an unhinged amount of makeup releases in that time. When I got back from my holidays, I was so overwhelmed by the amount of new makeup that had arrived in my home. I didn't even know where to start with the reviews, okay? I'm far, I'm very behind. But we're gonna catch up today and I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts with you. So grab a snack, grab a cup of tea because this may take a while. Just checking my hair waver was in fact unplugged. <laughs> Let's move on. Starting off with these new slash reformulated NARS blushes. We've been sensing this coming. It was just very obviously something was afoot amiss with NARS blushes because they've been disappearing. Much to my dismay, they have been like out of stock in most NARS blushes everywhere. So we've known something is happening. Either we're having a huge restock or discontinuation, reformulation for the population reiteration. We knew something was coming, okay? And what is coming is a reformulation and some new shades, but oh, where has Madly gone? Why is Madly not there, NARS? I was really, really hoping we were going to see madly come back into our lives. It's one of my favorite blushes of all time. Mine is now so dry, it's probably like five years old and I can just about get it on my cheeks but it's really not giving me <laughs> what it used to because she's old, she wants to retire to pastures. I really like that we slightly changed the shape of the packaging. I hope it's still as thin as they used to be because they're very easy to store as many as you can stuff in your drawer, which I love. And I'm super happy that Taj Mahal is back because that's another one that people just could never get previously. That is one of my all time favorites. So I'm glad that that one is back, but we're really missing some classics here, Nas. We need Madly. Where is she? That's like most people's favorite NARS blush. I also don't see Tempted either. That's again, that's one of my absolute all time favorite blushes, especially when it comes to NARS blushes. Luckily my Tempted is much newer and younger than my Madly is. So she's still good for a while, but please, I beg you, if we're gonna do all of this, bring back our favorite shades as well. Why have they been left out? What are you doing? So there's definitely some really nice new shades that I'm excited to try out here. I'm excited to try the new matte orgasm shade, orgasm edge. That's a matte version of the original orgasm. So I am excited to try that. That looks really pretty. I'm interested to see the reformulation. I don't think they needed it. They're one of my all time favorite blush formulas from NARS. I absolutely love their sheeny blushes. They're always populating my top drawer. I have several shades in there at all times. So I will absolutely be trying these. I hope, I hope and pray that they are an improvement. I don't see how it could be, but I just hope they haven't gone downhill like a lot of reformulations tend to do. I will absolutely be trying these. Not available in the UK yet. NARS, hurry up, please. NARS typically launches quite a bit ahead in the US than here, so we've probably got a few weeks to wait, but I will be all over these when they do arrive because I love a NARS blush. I mean, I love any blush, who am I kidding? Let the, the. Next up, let's talk about this new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Pressed Powder. I love the packaging of this. This looks gorgeous. Hourglass typically always get their packaging right. I think this looks beautiful if you are a pressed powder kind of person. I'm definitely not. Other than the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder, I, I don't recall the last time I bought a pressed powder. I just don't ever set my whole face. I'm only setting my under eye area. And this seems like much more of an all over the face setting powder. It's, you know, large. It's pretty expensive for something I just don't really use. It claims to be weightless shine controlling. 
setting touch-ups on the go, very oil controlly, which isn't really a thing under my eyes and sounds a bit too heavy and drying for that under eye area. I prefer a sort of lighter, very, very finely milled, maybe even a bit of satiny finish under the eyes, just because otherwise it's, you know, crinkle, wrinkle city. <laughs> That's not a place I want to spend much time. So I haven't picked this up. I don't really plan to. It's not something I use in my everyday makeup routine, but I have seen reviews and the peoples who love the powders are enjoying this. So this is just like, it's not you, it's me. I don't really use powder, so it's a no. If you are someone who uses powder though, use the powders that you've already got before buying this one or wait for a sale. It's a permanent product. We don't pay full price for permanent makeup. I'm, I'm always telling you. Also, I forgot to tell you why you didn't need the NARS blushes. Do you need to be told that? Because you've got three drawers of blushes already in your house. Also, a lot of them already from NARS. So that I, I thought that just spoke for itself, but just in case. Next up, the elephant in the room, if you hadn't noticed. I'm giving you a clue. I'm giving you a clue right now. Oh. I'm blind. We're going to talk about this Byredo Mineral Scapes eyeshadow palette. Listen up, okay? When I first saw this, my heart palpitated, all right? I had to have a sit down. And not many eyeshadow palettes are really doing that in 2024. We've got so, we've seen it all, okay? We've been spoiled when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. It's incredibly hard. I would have said impossible okay, to excite me by way of an eyeshadow palette these days. I would have thought that about my, I thought I knew that about me, okay, but Byredo came along and just proved me wrong. They said, wait, but you haven't seen ours yet. I have never tried by any, any makeup from Byredo before and have never really been drawn to, you know, it's expensive. It just looks like, mm, okay, fine. And then they walloped this one right in my face. I just couldn't look away. It just, for me, I think what tickled called my pickle about this especially is it just doesn't look like every other eyeshadow palette it looks like a lot of shadows let me count one moment 18 of them wait why does that say 17 three 18 eyeshadows so much range and variation within that 18 but yet not a single shade in there that i wouldn't touch with a barge pole okay a very unique experience upon seeing an eyeshadow palette where I look at it and I think gorgeous color story 18 eyeshadows I won't use nine of them that's usually how this goes um and usually I don't mind that you know maybe I'll try I'll experiment with a few this is like all my comfort zone my happy place but still very interesting and that's so hard to achieve when it comes to me I'm picky I'm afraid of color Okay, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to eyeshadow. I'm just winging it as best I can. This looks like I can use this whole palette every day of my life. It's got a lot of variation. We've got purples, we've got greys, we've got blues, we've got greens, we've got yellows. We've got some topiness. It just, it looked delightful. I was excited about it. It looked different to every other eyeshadow palette I have in my collection. And I've heard really great things about Byredo formulas, okay? I've really heard great feedback. I felt like my money was going to be well spent and I was going to enjoy and get a lot of use out of this palette. So I did pick it up. It's on my eyes today. Here she is. I have posted some swatches and things to my Instagram already. Um, and there is a video coming with multiple looks, including a oh, this bad boy. Okay. So I will be giving you all of my thoughts. I'm working on it. I'm compiling it. It's coming. I was so excited about this palette. What I will say is this is an incredibly FOMO inducing palette. It's got this very sexy packaging designed to lure us in via the eyeballs. And it's got many, many shadows to play with. And if like me, you took one look at it and went, oh, I need it. It's not like anything I've ever seen before. And it's limited edition. So I must run out and spend 100 of my hard earned pounds on it in case it sells out. But wait, okay, I beg you, give yourself a cooling off period. This has sold out in the US like three times and been restocked. So yes, 
they've slapped the limited edition sticker on it. And I, as far as I'm aware by radio, actually mean it. They're not like Natasha Denona, cool things limited edition, but they're still available like five years on. They seem to mean it. So, you know, if you have the money and it's an easy purchase and you're not having to like not eat for a week to spend a hundred pounds on this eyeshadow palette, then, you know, fine. It may sell out if you don't grab it the next time it restocks, but give yourself a cooling off period and also just let things go. If it does sell out, it wasn't meant to be and it's okay. There's another eyeshadow palette coming right around the corner. There's no point in going into debt for makeup. There's no point in going broke for makeup. It is just an eyeshadow palette, okay? It's not gonna feed you. It's not gonna take you for dinner. It's not gonna hoover your lounge for you. It's just gonna be eyeshadow on your eyes at the end of the day, okay? Nobody needs this, all right? Even if it really excites you and tickles your pickle, I promise you, you'll be fine if you don't buy it. I promise you, there'll be another one. Do you know what's coming in a couple of months time? The next Pat McGrath Mothership. I think it won't be long until we have the next Natasha Denona midi palette. There's always something, you know, just as exciting around the corner. So stop with the FOMO, let it go, let it go. Be one with the wind and the sky. I beg you. Next up, let's talk about Dolce & Gabbana have a whole load of plethora if you will, if you don't mind me using that word. Well, I don't know why you would, but moving on. We've got the blueberry, blueberry, Nutri, I, I hear blueberry, I think Violet Beauregard instantly. And I don't know if that's a good thing, but that's what happens in this brain. I don't know about yours, probably something different and more normal. We have a mint oil lip pl plumper. I feel like they're using a lot of words in here that are, <laughs> making my shackles rise up, okay? Um, a lot of this is giving me negative connotations. Then we've got an eyeliner, revolutionary. Um, and then the Ever Kiss liquid lip. I feel like they've tried to put as many words in here to put us off. They're doing the work for me, okay? I, don't, I just need to read the names out of this and a lot of us are going, <laughs> no thank you, Ever Kiss. That sounds drying and shrivelly on the lips. I don't want a lipstick forever. I know some people really do, but I don't. I sometimes change my lipstick three times in a day um, and I don't want that to be a difficult process. I don't want the life sucked out of my lips, okay? They're, they have enough problems as it is. No transfer, long lasting, high coverage color. It sounds dry. It sounds dry and heavy. I've got a lot of liquid lips. I've found some that I really like that are really great and that don't suck my soul out via the mouth and I'm all right with it. So those are a pass for me. Mint oil lip plumper. Sounds like that horrible, you know, feeling that you get on the lips. Again, I've got some plumpers. If I want to plump these lips these days, I'm going for the Charlotte Tilbury, the new ones, because those things <laughs> are the real deal. Those are some serious plumper lippers. And I appreciate the fact that they have a really nice color to them. This looks like it's going to be clear so they're just there to plump your lips and then you've got to put another color on no thank you i'm lazy okay it's enough of an effort to put one thing on my lips let alone two or three you know so that's an easy pass if i'm using a plumper i'm going to reach for the charlotte tilbury or the fenty heat ones that also terrify the life out of me and mean that I can't kiss my husband for like three business days because he once experienced the tingling for himself and he was not a fan, okay? So yeah, I don't typically enjoy the pain of, of these plumpers, but if I, if I do feel like, you know, torturing myself, punishing my lips for some reason, they've done something bad to me, I want some color at least. <laughs> Hello. Otherwise, what are we doing? And then this blueberry Violet Beauregard Nutri Tint. Now it's infused with blueberry. That's where the name came from. But I, I feel like that's an odd name. Is that, is that just, that feels odd to me, including a fruit in the name of a skin tint. Also, aren't some people allergic to blueberries? Am I, imagine, I think people are allergic to them. So that's, I, I feel a mistake to put something that people could be allergic to in a skin tint, but I don't know. Uh, maybe you don't eat it. I don't, I'm not sure how that works. I also thought for a second it said cilantro in here, which is, I was like, if you just want to put things that people hate in a product, you've done fantastically, D and G. But actually it says blueberry from cilento. <laughs> so I don't know why I said that. 
I don't know what it is about this brand. I've yet to have been tempted to pick anything up from them. Nothing has yet grabbed me. And this is, again, another more of the same. You know, a skin tint. We've had a lot of skin tints come out in the last year, and I love some of them so much. The Hourglass, although that's more of a tint of moisturiser, but the Lisa Eldridge. I have some really lovely skin tint products, and so I'm not really in the market for a skin tint especially, but if I was, or even if I wasn't, this one is not going to persuade me otherwise. It just, nothing about it sounds exciting. 24 hours of hydration, I don't believe you. And a healthy skin glow, sheer to buildable coverage, blurring effect. I just, there's, it's just all okay, fine, sure. But yeah, it's not, it's not really exciting me. I don't trust this brand yet. I've not seen anyone being wowed by their products. So they've got some work to do to get on my radar really at the moment this whole brand is just I don't see it I choose not to see it next up Dior are coming out with 18 that's right one eight are you okay new shades of their mono couleur single eyeshadow okay single eyeshadow let's call a spade a spade so not really a new product just new colors now Dior beige mitza is that what it's called? I think so, is it? Yes, it is. Beige Mitza is one of my all-time favorite one and done single shadows, beautiful. But typically, I'm not a single eyeshadow kind of girl. I wanna pull out a palette the vast majority of time. I'd like to be, okay? I'd like to be a one and done single shadow girly. I would love it. I think it would, it sounds fun. You know, one and done sounds fun. In the sun, etc. But, I'm just not. I actually have to force myself to use my single eyeshadows because I love them and so many of them are so beautiful, but I, I just am a palette person, okay? I'm a palette person in my heart and my soul. I want to whip out the palette and I just want to go to town whacking eyeshadows willy-nilly about the place and making an utter mess of it most of the time. I just find single eyeshadows aren't fun and I am in a fun place in my life, you know? I'm 40 years old. I want all the fun. And single eyeshadows are not fun. They're just, you know, it's a single eyeshadow and, you, and, that, and you're done, you know? <laughs> it's not fun. A palette is fun. I want to play with it. I want to find combos I haven't found before. So single shadows, I just, I, I'm not drawn to them very often. And I'm just looking at these colours and I think, sure, they're all fine. They're all nice. There are some swatches here. I'm looking at Mit Beauty Talks Instagram and she's got some swatches that she found of these new shadows. And there's just nothing there that I need that's wowing me or that's different or that's standing out. So these are all a pass and they absolutely can be a pass for you. If you are a single shadow person, there isn't anything here you don't already own. If you are a palette person, stop thinking about buying single eyeshadows. What you're doing? Don't make me come down there. Next up, oh, it's Dolce & Gabbana again. It's Dolce & Gabbana again. Now they're bringing out a load of bronzers, five bronzers and fair play to them. I'll say this is a decent shade range for a luxury fashion house. Typically, they were really bad at shade ranges, but this actually looks decent. A very light, the first one is very, very light for a bronzer, which we love for us fair skin beauties out there who want a nice subtle bronzer. That looks really nice and light. It goes fairly deep and it has some nice undertones in there as well. They look quite neutral. We like it. What is the white one doing? Is that a highlighter, I'm assuming, or a setting powder? I'm not quite sure. And then we've got some blushes. Again, the sort of variation of depth here is quite nice, but I've just never been, I am such a blush person, okay? I love blush. It's probably, I don't know if I can commit to saying a position in my life, but maybe it's second or third as far as you know, the most exciting makeup items. I think I've got to say mascara is my girl. I just love a new mascara. I love trying mascaras. It's probably my favorite step in makeup. Blush is right up there. It's got to be second or third place. I'm typically very easily pleased and excited when it comes to blushes. Show me a blush and I want it. I want all the blushes. So, I don't know what it is about this brand. I'm just looking at these and they just look so uninspiring to me. A lot of very samey tones. It's like a load of 
peachy pinks and a, like you know a, m a more brown neutral and a plum thrown in for good measure but they look kind of I mean this is judging a book by its cover to the nth degree but does, do they look like dry and powdery to anybody else just based on the picture I feel like it's illegal to judge blush so harshly as this just based on this picture because I can't feel it through the screen but there's something about these the packaging looks glorious I'll give them that but these blushes just don't wow me. They don't excite me. I can almost see the dustiness and the heaviness on my cheeks from here. I don't know what's giving me that vibe, but that's the vibe I'm getting. There's nothing wowing me about these blushes. I have 400 of this exact color and there's nothing that's telling me these are going to be especially exciting. This is an easy pass. Next up, Yves Saint Laurent are just coming for all of our lipstick funds this year. Have you noticed? As if they don't have enough of it. I flipping love a YSL lippy. All, every, they've never had a fail is what I'm saying. Every single formula they've ever come out with, I have loved. I love all their lipstick formulas. They never miss. They just really tickle my pickle. They're just my type on paper. I love YSL lipsticks. I always get excited about them. These are coming soon. It's their Love Shine Candy Glow Tinted Butter Balm. In the same way that D&G just threw a load of words that turned me off their products into that post. This is like a lot of my happy place words in here. A lot of this is exciting me. Shine, we heard the word shine, count me in. Glow, another, another favourite. Butter balm, I can feel the buttery goodness already from here, okay? This is massively appealing to me. This is why marketing is so important, okay? Because you've used a load of lovely words that sound delightful for the lips, and I'm excited and I want to try them. We could all take a leaf out of YSL's book. They've got me excited for these. These look lovely for summer. I'm really a big fan of like a tinted balmy lip product for summer when you just want your lips nice and shiny and hydrated but easy. You don't want to have to use a mirror to reapply. You want a sheer bit of colour that's very easy going, minimal makeup in the heat for holiday. These sound great. I love YSL's packaging. Everything is always very aesthetically pleasing. And we've got some great shades here as we always get from YSL but if you are on a no buy or a low buy, it's it's tinted lip balms, okay? You can definitely live without them. You definitely don't need them. I've no reason to believe that these would be limited edition. It sounds like it's just a new formula for the brand. So don't panic buy them, you know, don't wait for reviews, wait until it's an easy buy, wait for a sale. These look like lovely, comfortable, tinted lip balms of which we probably already have many in our drawers, if we're really honest. Next up, this new eyeshadow palette, Smoke Sessions 2 from Melt Cosmetics. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. This is an absolutely not, never, no, thank you. This is a very, very easy pass. I'm not going to pretend it's anything else. It's just, it's a lot. It's very, very purple, and purple is my favorite color, okay? Just not this bright and intense and colourful of a, a range of purples on the eye. Terrifying. This is one of my, you know, most uncomfortable colours to use on my eye. I love a softer, understated, smoky purple, but these sort of neon bright intense purples are terrifying to me. So I would just never use this. I would buy this for review purposes, use it once or twice in the tutorial and it would just go in a drawer never to see the light of day again. I'm not someone who's really a big melt cosmetics fan. Have I ever, I've tried a couple of things from them. Lipsticks, I think, and mascara? I can't remember, I don't remember. Do they even have a mascara? I'm not sure. I've tried very few products from them. Their eyeshadow palettes, I haven't heard great things about the formulas. So even if the color story was more up my street, I'm not really that excited to buy it, but the color story is just not for me. So that's an easy pass. Next up, let's talk about this new limited edition Galan Terracotta Super Bloom Bronzer. It's in shade three, which leads me to believe, as per the usual with these releases from Galan, this is just their terracotta bronzer shade three with a pretty insect 
stamped on it for your buying pleasure, okay? That's what this is. They always market this stunningly with these beautiful, tempting pictures. I bought one of these once and it literally did not show at all on my face. I was devastated, okay? It was so beautiful and pretty in the glorious packaging. Couldn't get it to show up whatsoever on me. They've just never really performed that well, I don't think. And even if the shade really works well for you, it's literally just a shade of their usual bronzer with, what is that, a B? Yes, a B, a B. It's a B. It's a beautiful B. <laughs> I've had two machine coffees, okay? That's my only excuse that I can think of. But no, I don't think these are great. I don't think they're worth the money. They come out every year and I've just never heard anyone talking about it being their holy grail and it's totally worth the money. I just feel like it's always, it's it's all B and no bronze is, is what it is in my opinion. But you know, that's effectively worth zero. Next up, Danessa Myricks is bringing out Yummy Skin Low Lighters. Still a very under paid, what is the word I'm looking for? I feel like a neglected, neglected is the perfect word, very much a neglected brand by me. I'm just always a little scared to dip a toe because these are some really innovative creative products and I kind of feel unqualified to use them. I feel a bit scared and intimidated by that brand because it feels like it's probably beyond me. But these really appeal to me. These look so pretty. That low key peachy shade looks glorious. So I'm going to pick, I'm gonna, you guys need to hold me accountable, okay? Because I keep saying, yes, I'm gonna pick up this Danessa Myricks product because I need to try more from the brand. It's a brand I really want to support a very talented makeup artist and I really want to try these products but I'm scared of them, okay? I I can't help it, I'm a wimp. So you guys need to make me buy this one so I can try it out and, and let you know if it's good or not because it looks delightful, very versatile. I love that you can use this in all different ways and there's a lovely range of shades there for different skin tones and different purposes. I just love to see innovative launches that are a bit different to what everybody else is doing. I wanna try it, okay? You guys need to check in on me once it's available here and make sure I've purchased it because it's about time. Next up, Natasha Denona's Hybrid Generation Skincare Infused Glow Beautifier. I think Natasha Denona and Charlotte Tilbury must have gone for dinner because that sounds like some Charlotte Tilbury word vomit, doesn't it? There's a lot of words in there for highlighter, is what this is. Glow Beautifier. I'm not gonna lie to you, I, it sounds good. It sounds good to me. Now this looks right up my street. We've got four shades and this is described as a bouncy, bouncy face gel wet powder. Oh, wet, wet. That sounds frightening. Okay, but Natasha is saying she's turned her best-selling primer serum into a multifunctional powder version. But why is it a wet powder? That concerns me. Creamy to the touch, lightweight and sheer, bouncy powder, feels weightless and provides a supernatural radiant finish. What do you mean by that? Because based on this description, it's like some kind of alien is coming, bouncing into my house and throwing water at me. And I'm not sure about that. But spoiler alert, this is the highlighter I have on today. I already bought it and none of those things happened. I didn't find no supernatural events occurred so far and it's never bounced off of my desk. It's just sitting there like all the other makeup. So I don't know. I think we've maybe over creative the description of this product. It's absolutely glorious, okay? I'm loving it. It's a very natural, beautiful glossy highlighter. I haven't found it to be wet uh, as far as I've noticed, but it does feel very gel-y type of formula. You know, it doesn't feel powdery or dry. It does feel like a cream to powder, creamy, but not in a cream way. Do you, is any of this making sense? No, I'm so sorry. What I mean to say is I love it. It's exactly what I was hoping for. It's right up my street. This is one of the products that came out while I was on my break and it's finally arrived. It took a long time because I ordered it from Natasha's website and it's finally here and 
first impressions are very, very good. I got the second shade, medium, and it's perfect. I really enjoy it. I'm getting to know it still. I will update you on my thoughts on it in my April roundup. But yes, I was all over this. This sounded like my type of highlighter on paper and I was not disappointed. Again, if you're trying to save money, if you're on a low buy, etc., permanent product this is not limited edition as far as i can see anywhere so don't panic buy it don't run out and buy it it is a nice natural luminous bit of highlighter but nothing supernatural here occurred okay and you've definitely already got many many highlighters so okay and finally the world's longest weeby that has ever weebied before and it's only getting longer because now we're going to cover these upcoming Charlotte Tilbury fragrances. Six of them. Six fragrances coming soon from Charlotte Tilbury. I did not, this was not on my 2024 bingo card. This was not in my makeup predictions, although strictly speaking, it's not makeup, but I did not see this coming whatsoever, all right? And so I really did not know what to think when I first saw the sneak peeks of these and the reveal of the names, <laughs> some of which are <laughs> interesting. My initial thoughts were, hmm, I'm not sure about perfume from Charlotte Tilbury. I am a Charlotte Tilbury stan, ride or die, when it comes to her makeup. But I am, I'm so fussy and picky when it comes to fragrance. I know exactly what I like. I know the fragrance houses that I like. And Charlotte Tilbury is not on that list because she's never, I think she has done a fragrance before, right? But I've never tried it. So... I don't know anything about it. I don't know what to expect. And my immediate gut thoughts process was, oh no, they're not, I'm not going to like them. That was my initial, initial, initial gut reaction. I'm just going to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting to be interested in these. And then I started doing a bit of digging. Okay. And these are not a cash grab. Charlotte's just decided I want to join the fragrance gang and make some money out. I mean, I'm sure she did want to make money out of the fragrances is what I'm saying. These were no rush, cheapy, let's just whip up some fragrances in the back of the lab from leftover dust that we found from over fragrance makeup. That's not what happened, believe it or not. She has recruited three of the world's leading perfumers, all female noses, who between the three of them created Lady Million from Paco Rabanne, YSL Libre, Givenchy's L'Interdite, and Mugler's Alien, okay? She has tapped up some of the world's greatest perfumers. So when I read who was behind these fragrances, now I'm interested, okay? Now I'm interested. This actually sounds like these have been done with a lot of time and attention and not just as a throwing out a fragrance line, but actually some potentially great fragrances in here. So let's take a look at each of these little perfumes. There are six all completely different scent profiles and type of scent. I will just say, I don't love the packaging on first impressions. Sometimes packaging in person looks nicer than it does in a photo. And this could definitely be one of those times. So I would definitely want to get my hands on some of these to actually look at the packaging. But I don't really love that tall pointy witch's hat lid. I'll say that. I don't love the look. I love an understated classic elegant fragrance bottle. Fragrance is expensive. I want it to look luxurious, understated, classy, elegant. And these feel a little, like they look a little, I don't want to say the C word, <laughs> but they do look a little more affordable than I feel like they, they are. I haven't seen the, the price on these yet, but I, I wanted them to look a little more expensive than I feel that they do personally. But that's, you know, a side note. So first up, we have Calm Bliss. And I feel like the colours of these bottles and the names really tell you a bit about the juice inside. So this is an aromatic aquatic fragrance, unisex fragrance. It has watery notes, neroli, lavender, musk, orris root. This is, I feel like a pass. This is just not my style of fragrance at all. I don't really wear aquatic 
fragrances. I think I, I love the sound of the notes. It's very interesting, but that lavender note is a straight, I, I can't stand lavender in my fragrances. So this one is a pass for me personally. It's interesting. I like the look of these notes and they look like really interesting fragrances, but that one is a no for me. Next up, we have Joyphoria. This is one of the bottles I like the most, but again, this is a very much white floral heavy fragrance. Very not me, okay? Neroli, white flowers, jasmine. Again, one of my, mm, I see jasmine. I think no. Lang Lang, fine. Coconut water, vanilla, must. So there's some interesting notes in there. Coconut water, I'm interested. I love a coconut. I love some vanilla in my fragrance, but it's basically a very white floral heavy fragrance. So that makes it a no from me. I don't like white floral fragrances or typically floral fragrances at all, just not my cup of tea. Next up, we have Cosmic Power. This is described as an aromatic spicy fragrance. And this is probably my favorite on paper of the bunch and the one that I would definitely pick up. So this has black pepper, elemi, cinnamon, rose. Not my favorite note, but in the middle, don't mind it as long as it doesn't super dominate the whole fragrance. And then the base is amber, vanilla, frankincense. That sounds ideal to me. It sounds right up my street. Very, very intrigued and very, very interested in that one. So I will absolutely pick that one up. Next up, we have Magic Energy, which is an aromatic fragrance. It sounds quite woodsy. It has seaweed and um, that is definitely not something that I look for in my fragrances. But again, I'm kind of intrigued <laughs> as to what that will be like. Top note of bergamot. I can, I can really smell this as being a very fresh, you know, woodsy, after the rain type of scent. Again, not my jam at all, but I am very interested in it. The bottle is very much giving wicked vibes to me. Anyone else? Wizard of Oz, Emerald Palace. That's what it's conjuring up for me. Next, we have more sex. <laughs> Why? Why is it called that? My problem here is, you know, you're walking down the street, you've got this stunning fragrance on, someone walks past you and they say, oh, I love your perfume. What is it? And you have to say, more sex. <laughs> I feel like you're going to get some strange responses. People are going to think, okay, you weirdo, you know, to that. Is that just me? I'm not sure about the name was necessary to be honest, but okie dokie. This is an amber woody fragrance. Again, all of these fragrances are unisex. We love that. I feel like that's a real statement from Charlotte that she's taken this fragrance seriously. She doesn't believe fragrances are for men or for women, which I do not like because literally every fragrance I wear is apparently for men. <laughs> So I do, I love that these are unisex. And again, these notes are very interesting, which is why I'm so sad about the name because I don't know if I can tell people that's what I'm wearing. But the top notes, black pepper, juniper berry in the middle, musk, sandalwood, leather, animal notes, interesting. Aldron, I'm not familiar with that note at all, and Ambroxan. Uh, this is very, very interesting to me. Again, one that I want to try. I've seen already on Fragrantica, people are saying this reminds them of Oud for Greatness, one of my all-time favourite perfumes from Anicio. So I feel like I, I, frustratingly, I'm going to have to try that one regardless of the name. But I feel like Charlotte, she's just trolling us with these names at this point. She knows it gets a reaction. She knows it gets people talking um, and it certainly has done. So yeah, I, I, I know what she's up to. She's cheeky, Charlotte. She knows, she knows exactly what she's doing, believe me. And then finally, we have Love Frequency. And this is for the girly, girly, feminine people who want to smell like roses and just fairy dust. Okay, so this is your floral, woody fragrance, pink pepper in the top, whack of rose in the middle on its own as a middle note, patchouli, woody notes, musk. This is going to be a rose bomb. The bottle is telling me that, okay? It's screaming, I'm very rosy. That's what the bottle is telling us. So this is an absolute no. I know this is probably going to be a lot of people's favorite because so many people just love rosy, woodsy, beautifully feminine fragrances, but I just don't. I don't like rose in my fragrances unless it's just a hint. And I feel like rose typically dominates everything else. And I would expect that in this one, given it's the soul note in the middle. I think it'll be very, 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 very rosy. And that's just not for me. So the two that I'm most excited for would be 
more sex, of course, and cosmic power. Those are the two that sound right up my street. I'm very excited for these. Everything I've seen and heard is just kind of rumors at the moment. These are launching in um, a week or so once this video goes up, I believe, and I will be all over them. I've heard that there are going to be smaller bottles um, and maybe there's going to be an opportunity to buy like all six minis as a sample set, discovery set. If that's an option, then I will absolutely do that so I can tell you my thoughts on all of the fragrances. But if there are only full size bottles available, those two I'm excited to try and give these a shot. And of course, I will let you know my thoughts on them. I'm excited for these. I wasn't initially, but once I started reading about the development process and the perfumers, I got excited, okay. So there you have it. <laughs> I'm so sorry for keeping you as long as I have today. I can only apologize, but thank you so much for joining me. I would love you to share your thoughts on these new releases. What are you excited for, if anything? What are you steering well clear from? Please let me know in the comment section all of your thoughts, but thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.